This is the most versatile dog toy we have ever owned. For things like teaching your dog a brain game, to make crate training easier. You can simply use it as a pastime for your dog. You can even pop it in the freezer for a summer treat. And the good people at Kong sent us this, as well as 2,499 more, which is a very cool opportunity because it means we can donate these to shelters and charities and dogs in need. But before we do that, there's a few things we want to show you. So check this out. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. My name is Instructor Shannon, and today we are going to talk about toy motivation. If your dog is not toy motivated, I have three different strategies that we are going to talk about today to help them build some toy drive. Now, lots of dogs come home already loving and being really interested in toys, but lots of dogs don't. And in my experience with tollers, I have had some that have come home just being excited about toys right off the hop, and then I've had some that have come home and had no interest whatsoever in toys. Now, despite being a retriever, Ned came home having almost no real interest in toys at all, and I had to spend a lot of time building that drive up. So one of the games that we played in Scent was to take a tiny little bit of something that smelled really good and just rub that on the opening of this toy. And this is one of the things that I absolutely love about the Kong toy is that it has the ability to take food inside it very, very easily. And all I'm going to do with that, because I want to create some engagement with my dog, I want him to love the toy, but I also want to make Make sure that he loves the toy in connection with me. So what I'm going to do with this little bit of cheese is I'm going to put it out really easy. It's so easy for him to find it. And I'm going to say, okay, get the cheese. Good boy. When he gets there, I'm actually going to say yes. And then I'm going to feed him for me. And then we're going to take that Kong and I'm going to let him lick that that cheese out of the Kong as I'm holding on to it so that I'm part of the equation as well. Now that was a really, really easy first step for Ned. It was a couple of feet away, it was visible to him, and he could probably smell the cheese from where he was sitting. What I want to do is start to make this game a little bit harder. So I'm actually going to start to place the Kong a little bit further away. So again, I've got a little bit of a scent indicator that I'm going to rub in the inside of the Kong. I'm going to go and place that a little bit further away from my dog. Good boy. And then I'm going to tell him, okay, get the cheese. Yay, good boy. I'm going to meet him at the Kong. I'll feed him. And then I'm going to take that toy back away and I'm going to let him lick the cheese out of it as I engage with him and tell him he is a wonderful dog. Now, of course, we were talking about them using their nose, not them seeing something and going to find it. So now what I need to do, now that he knows the game and he knows what to do when I say find the cheese, I am going to leave him in his crate so that I can hide this. But I'm not going to make the hide too hard at this point because he's still learning and I want to make sure that he understands the game is to try to find this toy. So again, I'm going to take my little bit of cheese. I'm going to rub it on the inside of the Kong there. Just a tiny bit is all I need there because I'm going to make the bigger reward the engagement with me and the rewards that come from me. And all I'm going to do is take it to a pretty easy hiding spot just right around the corner here. I'm going to put it down and then I'm going to go and get Ned out of the crate and see if he can use his, start to use his nose now find to cheese. find it. No, that's not the cheese. <laughs> find the cheese. Where's the cheese? Time out. Now, I made a bit of a mistake here, so let's talk about that. There's a lot of stuff going on in this room. There's a big basket of toys there that happen to have some of Nettie's favorite toys in them, and there's some other distractions around here as well. And I made the mistake of not setting up my environment well enough so that my dog could definitely have success, and he made other choices besides trying to find this Kong. He tried to find some other toys that he was interested in. He tried to find another Kong that was up over there, so if I minimize the distractions in my location, I set my dog up for a much more successful search with that uh, toy that I'm looking for him to find. Yay! Look at you! You found it! Good boy! All right, get that. Get that. You want that? You want the cheese? So even now he's more interested in the food in my hand than he is in this Kong. So that means that I am doing a good job of engaging him, but I need to make sure that he's really more interested in this Kong because that's sort of the point here. So I'm going to show him this and I might move it around and make it more interesting. Good job! Get that cheese in there, buddy. And now he's interested in it. Good boy, way to go. Now the next thing we are going to tap into is our dog's chase drive. And that desire to chase things is so strong in 
every single dog, we just need to make it work to our advantage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm either going to get a long toy to use, or I'm gonna make my own by taking a line or a shoelace of some sort, and just basically making this into a toy that I can drag around on the ground and I can make appealing for my dog so that we can build his desire for toys by using that chase drive. I need two things in order to make this work. One, I need to be able to make the toy move. So I've got it tied to a line here so that I can jerk it around a little bit and make it look like prey to my dog. The other thing that I need to be able to do is keep control of the toy because when I've got a young dog in training, the last thing I want is for him to decide he does like that toy so much that he is going to exit stage left and I'm gonna be left all by myself to play. So what I'm going to do is make this animated, make it exciting, and then when he latches onto it, I'm gonna make sure that we get to engage together and play. Okay, buddy, get it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Yay, good boy, get it, get it, get it. Yeah, good job. And the string allows me to let him grab it and do some tug. The last thing I wanna do is get my point, my dog to the point where he is completely exhausted and disinterested in this toy. So I'm gonna make sure that I keep my play short and I put my toy away while he's still wanting more. So when he's still excited about this thing, I'm gonna make sure that that's when the toy goes away so that the next time it comes out, it's just as exciting for my dog. A lot of times people think that when their dog is not interested in one toy, that means that they should go out and find all sorts of different kinds of toys. And while that's not untrue, you do wanna try different toys, you don't want to be reliant on that. Rather, be reliant on making one toy really, really interesting with some of the games that we've talked about today. In addition, it may seem counterintuitive, but we don't want you to leave toys out on the ground for your dog to have access to all the time. If this was the scene I had in my living room and my dog always had the option of coming and playing with these toys on his own, it makes it really hard to build drive to want to play with those toys for, with me. And it also makes those toys become much less valuable for the dog because they always have access to them. And when you're done with the toy, you are going to put it away. Now, the interesting thing about putting it up somewhere high, like on the fridge, dogs already love coming into the kitchen because that's where the food comes from. There's already innate value for them there. Now, what I like to do when I've got a young dog in training that I'm trying to build toy motivation for is I will take that toy off the fridge when they're excited about the kitchen, tease them and be silly and wee, and then put it right back up on the fridge before they actually get to play with it. We've talked about using food in toys and there's lots of toys that that is an option for. However, I would never leave my dog alone with a toy like this. And that is where the Kong really shines. The Kong is a product that we trust to make sure that we can safely leave alone with our dogs. Now the caveat to, caveat to that is that Every dog is a little bit different and you should always supervise your dog with anything you're leaving them alone with first to make sure you feel safe doing so. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a little hunk of cheese and block that hole at the end so that everything I put into my Kong that's runny doesn't end up running out. And that's important because I'm gonna be using peanut butter and I like to use natural peanut butter. If you're using peanut butter with your dog, it is crucial that you make sure there is no xylitol in the ingredient list. That is very, very dangerous for dogs. So I've got my cheese stuffed in the end here. I'm gonna take a little bit of my peanut butter and I'm gonna stick that down inside the Kong. Not too much, but just enough to pique interest. And then I might even take some other little treats. I might take some liver bits and drop them in there. And I might take a little bit more cheese and drop it in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a piece of carrot that'll fit nicely into that hole. I'm gonna stuff it down nice and deep and I'm going to make my dog work away at that. And that's going to take him some time and it's gonna build value as it's happening. Now another really fun thing that I can do is freeze my Kong so that my dog has a nice frozen treat for hot summer days. I've put that cheese in the bottom so now I can just tuck it inside of a glass, put it in the freezer door and leave it overnight. See you in the morning. Now that your dog is really excited about toys, it's gonna to be really important to work on your drop it command. And if you need some help with that, watch this video right here. Now, if you'd like some support as well as a guided program to help you through, check out our Puppy Essentials or Life Skills online training programs. You'll find the link in the description below. And on that note, I'm Instructor Shannon. This is Ned. Happy training.